Thank you. Agenda items one and two, apologies for absence. We've received apologies from Councillor Lisa Newport and Councillor Christine Mason will deputise for her. Are there any other apologies for absence? No? Agenda item three, number of members attending, there are none. To receive declarations of interest, agenda item four. Are there any, please? Yes. Councillor Reeves. Microphone, please, over Uh, interest in a, a bungalow opposite this uh, particular development, uh, which is my mum's, which is being, which is basically come to me since her passing. Thank you, Councillor uh, Christine Mason. Yeah, I, I haven't got a pecuniary interest, but I have had contact with residents and with officers regarding this <coughs> site. But obviously, I'm quite open-minded. But in the interests of clarity, I will. I've had communications. To be honest, I can't remember what, what they were about now, but in the past I have now spoken about it. Thank right, you. thank you very much. Um, so the item number five is Seven Hillside Avenue and Claire. Perhaps you yep. will present it, please. So, Chairman, this application is for the demolition of an existing <laughs> dwelling and the construction of two linked detached four bedroom houses with associated external works and amenity. As you can see from the location plan, the site is located to the eastern side of Hillside Avenue within the residential area of Hawkwell. The site borders other dwellings to the north and to the south, along with um, other properties within Bosworth Close as well located here. As you can see from the following photo, uh, the existing dwelling is a detached bungalow on a reasonable size plot. The proposal is to demolish the existing dwelling and construct two linked detached two-storey dwellings as shown here. So you can see them just at the top there. New vehicular crossovers would be created onto Hillside Avenue to serve the dwelling, so they would be located here for each dwelling. Approximate heights would be 5.1 metres to the eaves and 8.8 .8 metres to the ridge. Materials would be red-faced brickwork at ground floor with upper walls in white painting render with grey plain roof tiles. Members will recall that a similar application was put before Development Committee in September last year for two detached dwellings at this site as shown here. This was refused permission for three reasons relating to impact on character, lack of mitigation in the form of a standard contribution towards the Essex Coast Recreational Disturbance Avoidance and Mitigation Strategy, RAMS, and the lack of visitor parking. The current application seeks to address the reasons for refusal of the previous application. So looking back at the one we're currently considering, so the key material planning considerations are impact on character, impact on residential amenity, garden sizes, impact on highway safety, sustainability issues, trees and ecology. So looking at impact on character first, the proposed positioning of the dwellings is not objected to in principle. However, the plot width distances would be less than the 9.25 metres per detached dwelling within the council's supplementary planning document too. The current application has changed the dwellings from a detached to a link detached form. However, this is not considered to address the issue around plot widths, which was a reason for refusal of the previous application, as the 9.25 metres minimum frontage criteria is still considered to apply. The proposed layout and setting would not have a good relationship with the surrounding area, with the lack of plot width resulting in a tightly packed development at odds with the more spacious character of the locality. The proposal is still considered to be contrary to policy CP1 of the core strategy and policies DM1 and DM3 of the Development Management Plan and the MPPF, and this remains an officer reason for refusal here. Looking at impact on residential amenity, the 45 degree test to ensure no unacceptable overshadowing occurs has been adhered to. This development would not be considered to give rise to overlooking or overshadowing of neighbouring properties. Looking at garden sizes, both of the properties would be provided with rear private amenity spaces in excess of the required 100 metres squared. Looking at impact on highway safety, 
The site provides two parking bays per dwelling to the appropriate sizes within the parking standard document, and the proposal now includes two integral garages to the appropriate sizing, which would ensure that sufficient resident and visitor parking is provided. This would address the previous reason for refusal around visitor parking. The two new vehicular accesses are considered acceptable. Looking at sustainability issues, all new dwellings are required to comply with the technical housing standards, nationally described space standard. The proposed dwellings would exceed the requirements. A planning condition would be recommended if planning permission were to be approved to ensure compliance with the necessary water efficiency standard. Looking at trees, there is a tree and shrub situated to the eastern and southern boundaries of the site. The tree and shrubs would either be removed or pruned the trees are not protected and whilst they offer some visual amenity within the site are not considered to be of any significance and therefore the works are considered acceptable. And finally on ecology, the proposal is in the scope of um, the Essex Coast Recreational Disturbance Avoidance and Mitigation Strategy RAMS as it falls within the zone of influence for likely impacts and is a, resident, a relevant residential development type. It is considered that mitigation would, in the form of a financial contribution, be necessary in this case. This has been provided, and this addresses the previous reason for refusal here relating to the lack of such mitigation. Uh, just one final thing to mention. Within the officer report, uh, upon page 5.14, the core strategy and development management plan um, reference under the policies and proposals section there should be some policies actually referenced there. And I'm just going to read out the ones that we would be proposing to include within that section. And under the core strategy, it would be policies CP1, which is a design policy, and T8, which is a parking-related one. And then under the DM um, policies, we would normally list um, DM1 and DM3, which are around, about around design. DM4 is about floor space. DM25 relates to trees, and DM30 relates to parking. It's just something we want to make sure um, is on any decision notice that we send out. So I just wanted to make reference to that uh, as an addition to what you've currently um, seen. This application, Chairman, is recommended for a refusal for the reason outlined in the report. Thank you very much, Claire. We have no, um, no one to speak on this, no visiting members, so I'm going to give it, pass this over to... Councillor Christine Mason, as the ward member, you will have five minutes to speak, Christine. Thank you. Is it on? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. I must admit, I concur mostly, I think, with the officer's report, but I would like to look at the first uh, slide first, the one of the existing property. And to, and to look at the curb there, because I know there is a parking issue in that area. It's often, um, yes, I, I thought so. So there's one sort of access there, which would no longer be, there'd be two, so the whole thing would be then curved, would it? Dropped curbed. Could you just clarify so the difference between the curb, curbage there, and the curbage proposed, please? So um, it wouldn't be full length of curbing. Uh, let me zoom right in. But it would be two sections of obviously a lot wider curbing than we've currently got. Um, so let me zoom in quite a bit more so we can see it a bit more closely. So as you can see here, that's the proposed curbing that they're looking at there and, and there as well. So there would be a section in the centre but there would be these two much wider um, drop curved elements. Um, Essex County Council highways have recommended the condition which says that they shouldn't be any greater than 4.5 metres in width. Thank you. Re regardless of that, there will be the loss of off-road off parking in an area that has, from my experience, uh, when I've been walked around that way, which it, you know, is relatively frequently, um, has difficulty with parking anyway. There's, there's quite a lot of parking there because, well, I don't know why, to be honest, because most of the houses have got access and have got car parks. I don't know if it's coming from outside. I don't think it's coming from the school. I think it's a little bit too far from that. Even the turning bay at the end of the, the road is sometimes congested. So whilst I see that the loss of visitor parking has been addressed, I think there will be an impact 
on the parking in the area. But my main concern is the plot width and the relationship of the properties to the adjacent properties. Um, these properties, if you put them somewhere else, would be highly acceptable. In that location, they're out of keeping. The visual amenity is quite different. The properties around there tend to be varied and spacious. These don't actually acquire with either of those. Um, with the surrounding property. So, so I would be inclined to endorse the officer's report for refusal. And if the, unless anyone wants to speak further, I'm quite happy to move that. Councillor Foster, are you, do you want to speak or do you want to second the motion? Yeah. Yeah. One point, have we got any pictures of the uh, street scene around it? Yes, I have actually. Could yeah. actually show members. I, mean, I know yeah. it, Christine knows it, and obviously um, mm. Councillor Reeves does, but uh, we've just got. So members will can, who don't know this will see, be able to see the street scene as it is. Yeah, so just, I'll use my. So that's the bungalow up here, and then so this is looking south um, down um, down Hillside Avenue. Um, sorry, I've taken a few of the surrounding street that we want. Again, no, no, that's no that's obviously the bungalow that we're considering. Um, and again, that's obviously looking we're looking north there, so you can see the adjacent dwellings there. So that's not too many far. That's going, that, so that's again looking south. We're going round the bend of Hill, um, Hillside Avenue there. We've got some properties set in the back there, and you can see um, some vehicles there. Thank you, Claire. I think we've Is that got enough? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's probably a bit further out. Look, that one. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Thank you, Claire. Councillor Foster. Um, thank you, Chairman. A couple of points. Um, first of all, I'd note that the reasons for rejection last time have been addressed. Um, the, the reason for rejection tonight says the proposed development is considered to be detrimental to the character and appearance of the site and the surrounding area contrary to policies within the development management plan and core strategy. Um, on page 5.5, item 3.17, It says, the part of the Hillside Avenue consists of an eclectic mix of architectural styles. In considering the mixed character and appearance of the surrounding area with significant variations in height, scale and design, there are no requirements in this location to follow distinctly on design. So I see that as a something of a contradiction to the conclusion and the recommendation. And also commenting on Councillor Mrs. Mason's um, comment about parking, it would seem perverse if it were rejected last time for lack of parking, and now it's proposed to be rejected uh, for the reasons that uh, Council Mrs. Mason said of having parking but losing on street parking. So, if I were that not already proposed for uh, uh, rejection, I would have been proposing we move acceptance. Right. I just want one clarification. We rejected on three items, and only two have been addressed, haven't they? That's correct, yeah. yeah. So, it's a, so the uh, parking was, has been uh, addressed, the contribution has been addressed, but it's the yes. street scene that we've got the issue, you have an issue with. Yes, right. so okay. If I may, Chairman, that's why I pointed out 3.17. It said, in considering the mixed character and appearance of the surrounding area with significant variations in height, scale and design, there are no requirements in this location to follow distinctly on design. Would you like to come back, please, Claire? Yes, so just to provide a bit of clarity um, on what we're saying there. So in that particular paragraph, what we're referring to is the general mix of housing design within the street. So we've got a bit of a mixture of detached, semi-detached, all of differing age and style. What our reason for refusal is about is about the fact that we're trying to um, put two detached dwellings in a plot width that doesn't quite match, or it's not, not to our policy um, guidance requirements in terms of sizing. So we're concerned that it's going to be out of character within the street because it's going to be quite squeezed in in relation to um, a lot of the detached houses along that street have a lot more wider frontages. So that paragraph is relating to the style of the dwellings than uh, what I, I understand that point, but the recommendation for refusal 
talks about street scene in effect. It doesn't talk about the size of the buildings in comparison to the width of the plot. It relates to the street scene with regards to the layout and setting of those dwellings. That's what it's, that's what it's relating to in terms of um, reasoning. Okay, we've had um, Councillor, would you like to speak? Your turn, if you'd like to speak, Councillor Smith. Thank you. Um, I, I was quite happy to re uh, accept the refusal last time. As, as you've just said, two of those issues have been addressed. And this is one of those applications that clearly is going to happen eventually. Um, but I, I was also going to refer to three, 317, where it, it does clearly describe the, the mix of uh, properties on the house. And as Councillor Mason said, the, the, the principle of a development like this in, in many other areas around the district is perfect, perfectly acceptable. But we're not quite there yet. It's just a little bit too much on the site. Um, and I, I don't think there would be any mileage in trying to put anything yet other as a reason for refusal, uh, anything else other than what, what's printed. So on that basis, um, I'm, I'm happy to continue the discussion and seconding the, uh, the, the reason for refusal that Councillor Mason put forward. Thank you. So we've got now got a proposal that we've discussed with Mr. Mason and Thank you. Um, just a clarification, the officer said the building was too big for the plot with the alleyways beside being less than 0.95 of a metre. Is that correct? So that was one of the reasons for the street scene because it's just too big for the plot. Um, could you also bring up the picture of the, where it shows the garages? I'll blow it up slightly because it's quite, the actual, actual plan please, yeah. Yeah, could you just blow it up slightly, are they, are they double garages or? Hmm. So, I'm just trying to, oh, wait a minute. I'm just trying to see where the second little parking spaces are. So the parking spaces will be directly in front. So you've got we have one space roughly here and one space roughly there in front of the garage as well. I'll scroll down and show a bit more here. Mm -hmm. So this is the actual. No, it's not shown sort of clearly because you've not got a floor plan um, for this part of it. But um, the garage is actually here, and then you've got two parking spaces here. Oh, sorry. So you've got the garage located here, and then the two parking spaces will be located there, and that'd be replicated for the, the plot below. Um, and in relation to the actual sort of spacing, the, the issue is the actual concern of officers, the actual plot width itself. So we have a minimum of 9.25 metres for detached dwellings per, um, per detached property for the plot width. Um, what we're looking at here is a measurement of 9.1 and 8.9, so we're beneath that measurement measurement for um, detached dwellings and we are still treating the link detached as detached when we're applying our policy guidance for this application. Have you got a supplementary question? Yeah, no, just on, on those answers I'm prepared to not grant this as well. Thank you, right. Refusal. We have a motion um, for refusal. Uh, that's a motion. Sorry, could, I, could I just come back on the motion if I may? Yeah. Um, clarification, because although I said that I was inclined to put the motion and uh, Councillor Smith kindly seconded, I didn't actually formally put it, and I'm quite happy to do so. But uh, I just want to clarify the reasons for refusal, as printed there, that we have policies, and our policies are well thought out, well documented, and well understood. And once we start deviating from those properties, we, we're accepting a lower standard and we're not just accepting a lower standard from a visual point of view, but from an accommodation point of view. And these, if they were to be built, would be someone's homes. And I think homes should be of the highest possible standard that this council can uh, apply. And in this particular area, the properties are spacious, they're set out. As far as I'm aware, they don't have garages in front of them either, uh, which is a design that I personally dislike. But the, the garages to the front mean that there's 
difficulty, if I understand the plans right, the extra parking is in front of the garages, which will then mean that it's not very easy to access the garage parking, which again is a concern. And, and so it's not just, um, I understand Councillor Foster's concern about the point in 317, but I think it's well addressed and I think it's misunderstood perhaps. And, the ca and I would certainly say that the reason for refusal that the officer has put is sound and should be, the application should be refused. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mr. Mason. So are you actually now putting a motion in for refusal? I have done so, yes. Yes, just thank you. And explaining Cal clarity, yes. And um, Councillor Smith is seconded. Right, we've got a motion on the table, members, for a uh, recommendation for refusal. Can I please have a show of hands for refusal, please? Right, thank you. Anyone against? One. And then <coughs> So we've got 10 for refusal, one uh, against refusal. So thank you, members. This has been a very quick meeting. Um, thank you for your time. Oh, have a bit. Oh, oh, oh. Have we got anything else on? Sorry, I've got to just go through before you all scuffle off. Have we got anything for? Oh, we've got nothing on the weekly list. No, no right. Thank you, members. And I will close the meeting at <coughs> 1953. Thank you. Thanks for the meeting.